Welcome to another allotment diary. Today, I'm at my old plot. I wanted to show you what this one looks like. Unfortunately, as I've moved house, where I've moved to, this plot is now just a little bit too far for me to get to. I moved on the other side of a main road, which is absolutely manic in rush hour. So coming over here now has become quite a trek. I, it takes me 30 minutes on a good day now. If I'm traveling outside the rush hour, if I'm traveling in rush hour, well, just forget it, it's going to take forever. It's incredibly busy around here. So, unfortunately, I think I've made the decision that this plot is going to have to be given up. I've come down today to try and tidy a bit of it up, um, show you what's going on, and just cover a few of the beds so that the next person that comes along isn't going to have too much of a nightmare taking over. Unfortunately, though, I'm onto a bit of a losing battle with this plot, which I'll show you as I talk you through it. Now you may remember a few weeks ago, I completely cleared this end. And you can see it's grown back as if I've never, never touched it. Um, you can see my compost bins, the comfrey's growing out the uh, compost bins as well. Yeah, the blackberry has gone absolutely mental. It's, it's just grown really, really wild. The problem I'm facing here is this, this end and the other weedy end of the plot haven't been cultivated in years. So all you've got to do is turn the fork in the soil and suddenly all these seeds spring to life that have been dormant and buried underground. The problem you've also got, of course, is the root network under here. In places, I physically cannot turn a, a fork full of soil because of the amount of weeds in the ground. So that's, that's going against me. I'm also, I've got to f uh, face with that. That's the nature part and orchard of the allotment. And that's great. But the trouble is, it's quite new to my plot, so obviously I've got to battle with all everything coming from there onto my plot. So no matter what I do, this plot is never going to be weed free. And we're talking years before I can actually start to win against this plot. The other issue I have is with the shed. Now, the shed's great. To be fair, it's in the wrong position. It should do with coming back this way a bit. But it needs a lot of maintenance work. Yes, I've painted it this year. Yes, it needs another coat of paint. But the roof leaks, the gutter's falling off, the floor needs replacing, the floor's completely rotten, and I've got a horrible feeling there's actually mice living under the floor. So that's going to be quite a lot of investment. I've got to dig. I'll show you in a minute, but I'll show you the far end as well. That needs digging, it needs raised beds building, it needs a lot more putting in there. Um, a lot of soil bringing in because down that far end it gets very very waterlogged. The other thing I found out is there used to be a road coming sort of round here. So part of this outside of the plot used to be a road. So of course the soil you go down three four inches and it, it's tarmac which of course makes my life really really difficult. Growing wise uh, to be fair, things have been a bit of a disappointment. I've had terrible trouble getting anything to grow. Believe it or not, in here, there are some beetroot. Um, they are in there somewhere, but they just haven't matured. They, they've, they've been in there months, and by now I'd expect them to be fully mature, good size, but they're not. They're not there's absolutely nothing there. Um, the Brussels sprouts I planted in here, and I, I can't remember what that one there is. I think that might be broccoli. But these, these were Brussels sprouts. Again, the problem is, is because I'm under the trees, the pigeons sit in the trees. These need to be covered until they're a good size, and then you can let, let them go, because otherwise, the pigeons are eating the lot of it. So I, I've had a real, real struggle growing anything. Um, my strawberry bed looks great. I've uh, cleared it. There's lots of runners now, I know. But the problem I had is I came down in June and thought, great, there's a huge crop of strawberries, and there was. There was loads and loads of them green. I thought, right, I'll, I, I've obviously netted them all. I'll come down and I'll collect them in about three or four days when they're ready. I came down four days later, all the strawberries are gone. There's not a single strawberry there, not even the green one. Don't know what happened to those. No idea. Now, I planted some squashes um, and these are various types of zucchini or courgettes. There's round courgettes and there's marrows in here. And again, Courgettes are a plant which you put it in the ground, it goes absolutely crazy, and you're, you're literally 
giving away courgettes on the side of the street. They're that manic in the way they grow. No, not this year. I've had five courgettes off six plants, I think it is. Um, you can see here, there's one of my round courgettes, and there's another one over there. Buried under here, that's a marrow. Bear in mind, this is the middle of September, and these were planted out towards the end of June. And that's the marrow. That's it, out of three marrow plants. So I'm very, very disappointed in how things have grown. I feel they haven't grown very well. Um, I don't know whether it's to do with the plot. I mean, these beds, if you remember, were all dressed with compost um, manure before winter. It was well rotted down. It had about five, six months to rot down. It was dug in and, and left. But nothing, as, as I said, there's very, very, very little has come up. They produce an awful lot of male flowers, but very, very few female flowers. And I don't know whether that's down to the cool weather or, or something else. But uh, unfortunately, I, I'm very disappointed in the crop that I've actually managed to produce. I've never had trouble growing courgettes in my life. Um, and you can see in there, there's a couple of yellow ones. But again, the, down here, if we can get in there, you can see there's a yellow one there. And it's actually rotted on the, I'm just about to see it, it's rotted on the plant. So I'm not entirely sure what's gone wrong with them. Um, they just haven't produced, they're not the right size. There is, uh, there is a courgette hiding under there. They're just not the size that they normally are. And it is a disappointment. I've put in a lot of work on this plot. There, let's just twist that off. There you are, so it's a decent size. I put a lot of work in on this plot, I feel, and I just don't feel that it's produced the crop that I wanted. Um, you remember how deep in weeds it was when I got it, and I was really excited. And to, to, to be honest, I, I understand how people get to the stage where they just think they're going to give up. Very, very little has grown on this, considering how much I planted. Um, I planted three, four hundred beetroot seeds in various beds. I've had six beetroot plants, you know, that's it, and they were small. So I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm very sad. You can see that one there. It's been chewed by a friendly neighborhood slug. The herb bed though, that seems to have done quite well. You see thyme, that's uh, done well. Um, let's just get those weeds out. The thyme's done very well. The comfrey, I'm um, sorry, the chives, the um, coriander's grown well. Marjoram, oregano, all looking very, very good. Even the bay trees have taken, so I'm quite pleased with that. This was the bed with the seed tapes in, and to be fair, the seed tapes actually did surprisingly well. I had quite a few plants out of here that I've, I've harvested and eaten. Um, but again, quite low germination rates considering how much was put in here. Now you can see there's actually, if we go in there, actually a, a strawberry on the plant now. It didn't have any. They all, they all vanished in the spring, uh, in the summer. Every single one. I don't know whether they were eaten by mice, pigeons, or whether it was a person. I have no idea. But I do know that they all disappeared, which was really upsetting. Um, one of my kids is absolutely wild about strawberries. Loves coming down to pick them. And was very upset when she realized there weren't any there. So very, very sad about that. This was my brassica bed. I planted, again, probably 20 odd plants and none of them produced. They, they were eaten, they were covered, and the, the beetroot went to, the, sorry, broccoli went to seed before I could pick any of it. They just didn't form heads. The cauliflower did the same. The Brussels sprouts, though, they are starting to produce some baby Brussels sprouts in there. So they've done all right. So I can't grumble too much. I did plant some crops in between them. Uh, again, most of those haven't actually come up. There's some uh, rainbow shard here. Um, I've had a few radishes. And um, 
I think there was a couple of beetroot in here somewhere. There's some carrots as well somewhere. They've done all right, but again, nothing that you get really excited about. The square foot garden has actually produced quite a bit. Really, I'm, I'm, I am surprised. I, I wasn't expecting it to do that well, uh, but it, it's been very productive. I've had quite a lot out of there. The carrots grew, the radishes grew, the leeks are doing well. The cucumbers, unfortunately, um, they haven't done as well. And you can see there, there's a cucumber. That's it. Um, the Swedes, they've not developed. Um, you can see there again, just haven't rounded out. They're just blank. Those are parsnips. There's some carrots there. Um, you come out here in between the mare's tail. These beans, these these did fairly well. Got a good crop of those. Got a good crop of the broad beans as well. Um, these are turnip. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't remember which ones these are. But these, again, there's a label. Oh, these are turnips. No, they haven't really turniped, have they? And again, this is this is rainbow beetroot. And again, it's it's not swollen. It's all remained very small. Considering that rain we've had this year, I'm actually very surprised. That's um, celery. Again, it's doing all right. It's not brilliant. That bed there was all my um, onions. The onions did okay. The problem I had with the onions was though, they they rotted very, very quickly. I had to come and get them uh, very, very soon after they were ready. Uh, normally you can leave them in, they don't mind. These were just gone. They, they, a lot of them were, the, the middles had rotted. The garlic all rotted away and was destroyed. I don't know what happened with that, um, but it got rust and it just died. Um, which was really disappointing because it was very, very close to being ready. It had, it had grown nicely, it swollen up, it was forming proper proper cloves. And I thought, right, I'll just leave it a couple more months, so it's, and another month or so till it's ready. And unfortunately, um, it got rust and it all rotted. So, again, absolutely distraught with that. The leeks over there, they're doing okay. I did try to plant other crops in but faster growing crops in between the leeks um, but again none of them took absolutely none of them they all died again very very disappointing um, the leeks though they look all right there's a bit of signs of illness a few I could probably pull now um, but again these these are, are way behind where I'd expect them to be I'd expect them to be ready shortly um, I've looked at other people's plots, their leeks are a lot, lot bigger, so again, I don't know, um, I really don't know, but this is starting to strike me as one of those difficult plots that, you know, you've heard of these plots where people just struggle to get anything to grow, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm beginning to feel that way uh, ab about this plot. Going behind us here, I planted the, the run of beans, which I've got a good crop of those, I will admit. They've done very, very well. I put a couple of squash plants in the bottom. They've not done anything. There is a, a celery and a, somehow the tomato plant ended up over there, um, which has produced a few tomatoes. But again, it's nothing exciting. These um, these have, have done well. There's, there's been way too many for me to use as always. So I'm letting a few ripen, then I'll, I'll pick those and um, we'll, we'll go from there really. The gothic flower bed didn't end up very gothic to be fair. It just got stuff stuffed in it. You can see there some of the sunflowers. They're very, very pretty. They're really, really nice. So very, very pleased with those. I didn't think they were gonna do anything. And that's what, nine feet tall, 10 feet tall, something like that. So can't grumble. They've, they've done very, very well considering. And you can see you know, good sized heads. Uh, the honeybees are absolutely loving them. So that's brilliant. Um, we'll have a look at some more of those when we go over there. The sweet peas as well, again, didn't think they were gonna do anything. Yet they seem to have grown really, really well. I was very, very surprised by these. Um, 
beautiful fragrance coming off them. I, I'm, I really, really like the fragrance. Um, but again, I, I thought for ages they weren't doing anything, and then suddenly they've just gone boom and um, gone absolutely wild. Um, but again, beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, I said, absolutely love the fragrance. Never grown sweet peas before, but I will definitely grow some more next year. And um, yeah, look at this. I've got all those bees there, busy. Um, obviously the bees, I, I've been talking to beekeepers on my other plot and um, they've told me that the bees have had a really tough year this year. Uh, because the weather's been so bad, they've not really produced many flowers. And so the bees have struggled to get enough nectar to produce honey. Um, but obviously now we've got a bit of a, a, a warm patch later on. The bees, bees are out in force uh, collecting sources, uh, resources for their winter months. So uh, credit to the bees and, and good luck to them. But I'm pleased that these flowers have come up and the bees have had the opportunity to eat them. Now, do you remember I dug all this over? Lots of hard work this, digging this over. I put down weed membrane, barked it, and the weeds have still come through. But the comfrey, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of it at the end of the day. It's always going to be coming through this path. Um, so again, no matter how much I try, the allotment's never going to look brilliant uh, because of that. But everywhere I look, through the weed membrane and through the bark, there's mare's tail, cooch grass, and comfrey. And unfortunately, it's not going away. And it upsets me that that's the case. Um, in this bed here, I planted a few bits and pieces. There was a cucumber plant. Um, don't quite know what happened to that. I'm assuming it's died. Um, there is a squash plant in there. I'll try and have a look at that in a minute without disturbing the bees. And this was my sweet corn. I was very excited about this. It's a variety called Bloody Butcher. So it produces red cobs. And again, I was really, really excited about this. Middle of September and nothing. It's only just sort of, what, six foot tall. So it's forming cups. Whether they'll be, be ready by the end of the year, I, I don't know. I, I really can't tell. But again, I'm, I'm quite disappointed in the lack of sweet corn there because I do love my sweet corn. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, there's, there's, there's a round courgette. So there's or a pumpkin or something. I, I'm not entirely sure what this one is. Um, I can't remember. Under here, there's a, a petty pan squash just over there. There it is. So that's that's come up, but that's it. That's the petty pan squash. Um, the cucumber plant, I think, died that was over here. There was other things in here, carrots and a few brassicas and odds and ends. None of them survived, unfortunately. Absolutely none. So, again, I'm, I'm on a, a losing battle. Oh, it's jack-o'-lantern, so that's, that's a pumpkin. Oh, I've just found a label for it. But it is very much a losing battle. Um, this was one of the children's beds. Um, they wanted to plant flowers. Love in the mist, I think that is. Not produced any flowers. Marigolds, finally producing flowers. Um, there's some beetroot down here. Um, if we go down, sorry for trying to move the camera slowly. Um, there's some beetroot there, but again, it's very small um, indeed for the time of year. So again, very, very disappointed in what's come up there. I really, really am. But you can see again, you know, these are doing fantastically well. You know, we're going, these are loving it. So very, very pleased with those, if nothing else. Now this uh, here was my giant pumpkin, I think, and one of the others was my jack-o'-lantern. You can see there, there's a pumpkin. It's not particularly giant. Um, it, I mean, the vine, to be fair, was, what, well, two feet long. It's only in the last month that it's actually stretched out and actually started to grow to a decent size. Somewhere in there as well there's a jack-o'-lantern. Um, if we go over here you can see there there's one ripening slowly. 
But again, I'm very, very disappointed. All this area here, I'd cleared, I'd started digging. Yeah, you can see the, the weeds are just jumping back and I don't think I'm ever going to get it under control. That area over there is completely weedy. Uh, it's another wild area. It was meant to be some sort of disabled garden. Nothing's ever been done with it. And because it's so full of weeds, all that's happening is it's spreading this way. And frankly, I think I'm, I just haven't got the time or resources to deal with this allotment anymore. Um, having moved, it's just too far away. The allotment I've got is in a lot better condition. The other one, a lot less work, and I'll be able to get a lot more off it. This is a weird shape. It's in a bad position, and it was good. I've enjoyed my time on this allotment, and I've loved it. It's been fantastic. I've learned a lot. I've done a lot. But I think, to be really fair, um, I'm going to have to call it a day because I quite simply haven't got the resources to come in here and spend the money that is needed to sort it out. I mean, to give you an idea of the difference, I was digging at the other allotment um, uh, earlier in the week and I was just happily digging away and, and then I thought, oh, I better stop now. I've been doing it for ages. I'd only been doing it for half an hour. I looked at the area I'd dug Bearing in mind I was stopping to pull out potatoes every two minutes and I thought, wow, that's an awful lot I've dug. And then I thought back to digging over here. Well, I was, I've been digging out over there. I was starting to clear this area. And I realised I dug this area and I dug probably a square metre and it took me an hour. I'd look back at the area I dug there in half an hour and bear in mind like I said I was removing weeds picking potatoes moving stuff around it took me half an hour to dig um, 10 to about 12 13 square meters and I think that's the difference yeah I could clear this area yes I could do something with it but I'm gonna be honest with you it's gonna take a lot of time more time than I have at present I do not have the amount of time it's going to need take for me to sort this allotment out unfortunately so i'm my plan is is to finish the harvest put a few beds to bed so to speak and um and then give up the plot and let someone else take it on because i i i haven't got the time and i i do feel bad about quitting and sort of giving up on the plot but I have to be realistic. I have found another allotment society, which is very close to where I live now, where I've moved to. It's about 15 minutes walk away. So I figured I'd apply for them and see if I could get in there. Um, because I would like two allotments. I would like the space to do more than I'm currently doing. And whilst this allotment looks fantastic once when it's been worked on the trouble is is it takes so much work to keep it that way I'm looking to make my allotment into a long-term project I want it to be low maintenance I don't mind doing the work but when I'm fighting a losing battle it, it's just too difficult what I need to do here is basically rip out all the raised beds I need to rip out all the pathing I need to dig everything over I need to put down the really expensive strong weed membrane as pathing um, I need to dig down probably two spade depths, go through, sieve the soil, remove all the roots, and that's an incredible amount of work. It, then this plot could be good, but I'm going to have to bring in sand and topsoil and compost down to this end in order to dig it, dig it in and really make the soil decent. And I, I haven't got the resources to, to do all this. So it, it is with regret we, we will be saying goodbye to this plot at probably towards the end of next month. But we are enjoying the new plot and I'll record a video there again very, very shortly. I've been quite busy, so you can see what's been going on there. And um, as I said, hopefully I will get on with a new plot as well. The great thing about the new allotment is there's a lot of exciting projects I can do there. They're very open to ideas. They're, they're very keen for you to really do do a lot of things and it's hard to describe you go you go to some allotments and you walk in and you look at them and you think wow this is amazing and the other allotment is is like that this one unfortunately i feel is just a little bit run down and 
it's going to be very, very hard work for me to do this. I was excited when I took it on. I needed an allotment. It's, it's very important for, for me personally on the psychological level that I have an allotment. It's good for me to get outside. I need the exercise. I love doing this. And obviously, I write about gardening and allotments and publish books. So it is, it's good for me to have one. I took this one because it, it was basically all that was available. And I'm pleased I took it. I've, I've had fun and I've got a lot from it. I've not got as much crops as I wanted, but I have had a lot from it still on many other levels. Unfortunately, like I said, you've got to realize when the time comes to, to let it go and, and move on. And it's now too difficult for me to get here regularly and commit the time I need to this site in order to do the work that needs doing. So what I want to do is, as I said, put everything to bed and then I'd like to move on to back to my other plot and you know get that ready I've got lots of plans for that one over winter and hopefully take on another plot at this other allotment society as well so I'm gonna get some doing some tidying up I'm gonna leave you uh, with the last picture of my flower bed there lots and lots of nice flowers in there I as I said big fan of sweet peas now absolutely love them so can highly recommend those so I will get on with doing a bit of tidying up and a bit of harvesting and let me know how you're getting on with your your site. How's your sunflowers doing? Um, so I reckon that's a good 10, 11 feet that tall, this one there. So how, how tall did you grow yours and how are your pumpkins doing? You can see mine down there. It's not brilliant. Worst I've ever done on pumpkins to be fair. Um, very sad about that. So, but looking forward to a really, really good new year next year, already planning for that. So let me know how you're getting on with yours. Um, let me know how well you're doing. And I will talk to you very, very soon in a video from the other plots.